What's going on everybody? It's Justin Gazub uh, and this is Living and Moving to Seattle, Washington. This is the channel that gives you all the nitty gritty details on what it's like to live, work, eat, sleep, play right here in the Emerald City, the Pacific Northwest, Seattle, Washington. And in this video, we're gonna talk about the top nine most expensive, luxurious neighborhoods that Seattle, Washington has to offer. So we wanna give you the, the, the details on what these neighborhoods look like, where they're located, and all the nitty gritty stuff so you can decide if maybe that's the right neighborhood for you. So let's get into it. All right, so let's start off with Medina. Medina is a wonderful neighborhood. It's just close to Bellevue, Washington, Hunts Point, Medina. Medina is known for Bill Gates, Jeff Bezos, and a ton of other multi-multi-billionaire, multi-millionaire, billionaire people that live in that neighborhood. Now, that neighborhood is so exclusive that there is just one corner store, one little grocery store, that honestly, if you are driving down the street there, you will probably get pulled over and, and asked why you're there. They have 24-hour surveillance, um, and you know, with that one grocery store, it's, there isn't a lot of going on. There really isn't a reason for you to be there unless you live there. Um, but it is beautiful, beautiful waterfront homes, beautiful, beautiful like estates with, with picturesque views. It truly is one of the nicest locations. Uh, it is set up so well that you can see um, Lake Washington, Mount Rainier, mountains all over. I mean, it is just beautifully, beautifully set up and you get all of the sunsets to the west. Our next neighborhood, number two on the list, is uh, in a big contrast to Medina. Laurelhurst is a beautiful tree-lined, wonderful, like you will see, beautifully done Tudor homes that are really well put together. Tree-lined streets, really, really nice, nice homes. Laurelhurst Elementary is, uh, uh, is known for like their PTA and fundraising. This is a really, really well-rounded and grounded community full of stately homes. Now, when you think about Laurelhurst in contrast to Medina, certainly more attainable, starting in, in the low millions, easy to get into that neighborhood comparatively to the multi-million, you know, 40 or 50 or so that would take you in Medina, give or take, right? You can look at some of those houses together. But Laurelhurst is just close to UW. Uh, it's really convenient and really easy to get around. And I'm just watching my dog. Hi. And so it's really convenient and really easy to get around. It's really, really well connected to Seattle. Uh, makes it easy if you have to commute into work to either get to uh, downtown Seattle or Bellevue, but it's also in its own enclave. It's separated from the rest. It feels really, really timeless. It's like the, the neighborhood that you're searching for. It's, it's got that nostalgia feel, that Americana feel, uh, and really, really, truly an elegant neighborhood. Number three on the list is Capitol Hill. Now, a lot of folks, when they think about Capitol Hill, they think about um, the multicultural and the diversity and the pride parades and the Capitol Hill block party and the, the bars and the restaurants, but there's another part of Capitol Hill that is beautiful. We're talking $10 million homes. They look like Mediterranean estates with pools and different wings to their homes, like beautiful, beautiful homes. That is also Capitol Hill. So you have to know that Capitol Hill is a it's kind of a long skinny neighborhood with a lot of different elements to it. There are multi-million dollar homes there that are quite uh, secluded and detached from the ruckus that is uh, maybe the, the prime part of Capitol Hill that you're used to hearing about. Certainly the part of Capitol Hill that has made the news in the last couple of years. This section of Capitol Hill is quite different, quite refined, very, very uh, you know, meticulously done homes that are, have tremendous views and really offer a lot to somebody who wants to be close enough in, be able to get to those bars and restaurants, uh, very short Uber rides, but wants that privacy that, that a stately home can offer. Number four on the list is gonna be Queen Anne. So Queen Anne, really does have that reputation through and through, similar to Laurelhurst, of, of being a, uh, um, an enclave, a community of homes that's a little bit detached, 
uh, beautiful views when the Blue Angels come to town and uh, they put on the show Seafair Weekend. You'll see these pictures of the Blue Angels kind of buzzing by the Space Needle. Those photos are taken from Cary Park, which is in Queen Anne. So you have to remember that Seattle is just a bunch of different hills. Queen Anne uh, doesn't have hill in its name, but it is a hill. Capitol Hill is a hill. First Hill is a hill. Crown Hill is a hill. But we have all these different places because we're coming up out of the Puget Sound and Queen Anne benefits from that because really there's a lot of homes there that can capture uh, southerly views, views of Mount Rainier, views of Elliott Bay, views of the Puget Sound. And it's another wonderfully done tree-lined street. The neighborhood was established in the late 1800s, so it has beautiful Victorian houses. And then we do see some infill of beautiful craftsmen's tutors, and even some really, really well done contemporary design and some stark modern homes in there as well. And so it really does run the gambit of having different styles at your disposal, being in a neighborhood that, that is renowned for kind of quintessentially uh, what people think of a prestigious Seattle neighborhood. It really is a beautiful spot up there. Madison Park is a small neighborhood. Um, it's very exclusive. The CEO of Zillow used to have a home there. It has its own little strip of downtown restaurants. Uh, they're written up about in magazines all the time. And so this little neighborhood, you'll find multi-million dollar homes, tremendous views. Uh, it's a beautiful, beautiful area. Madison Park has a real upscale uh, environment with waterfront homes and view properties there um, and it, again it's another one of those little pockets that's just detached just off to the side that if you didn't know it was there you might drive through uh, on accident you've been to those neighborhoods where you're like oh my gosh i didn't know this was here that's what uh madison park feels like especially with the bars and restaurants the first time you pull in it's like holy cow i can't even believe this is this is here and the best part is is that even if you don't live in madison park you you can still go to those bars and restaurants. Number six on the list is Broadmoor. Now Broadmoor is in Northwest Seattle, just north of, of Ballard, Capitol Hill, and on your way up to Shoreline. It's a golf course community there, very exclusive, beautifully kept grounds, beautiful golf course. Their clubhouse is amazing. Our company actually has had meetings in that, uh, in that uh, club and it's just really top notch, really well done. And it really does offer a sense of, of community, but also privacy uh, in that neighborhood. Broadmoor is a private gated community, um, and it's not too far away from access you know, to downtown Seattle or even over to Bellevue, um, but that's not really why you live there. You live there for the privacy, the exclusivity, the golf course, close into the city with a suburban feel. That's really, really gonna offer uh, some of the best uh, environments if you're looking for uh, a private gated community that offers that sense of um, refinement. So number seven on the list, uh, if you live in the Pacific Northwest, uh, the name might be familiar to you, but you might not know why. Now it's just north of Laurelhurst, close to UW, and it's called Windermere. So the Windermere neighborhood um, really truly offers multi-million dollar properties, exclusive waterfront, beautiful views. A lot of it uh, is on a, on a bluff that kind of looks southeast. If you are able to capture one of those homes that will get you uh, Lake Washington, Mount Rainier views, it'll get you Southern exposure um, and, and just beautifully, meticulously cared for homes in that neighborhood. The homes in Windermere do come with a hefty price tag, similar to most of these neighborhoods we're sharing with you today, where homes will often sell for several million dollars. Number eight on the list is Magnolia. And of the neighborhoods and areas that we've discussed, Magnolia is probably the biggest land mass. And there are certain parts of the neighborhood that are really easy and convenient and affordable to get into. But there's some other areas uh, like the Bluff that command a uh, uh, quite a price tag to get into. I've done a video before on Magnolia where I walked the park at the Bluff and we showed some houses. Those homes on that Bluff they capture views similar to Queen Anne that capture Elliott Bay and the Puget Sound, the Space Needle downtown, the downtown core. You'll be able to see Alki to the south and Mount Rainier. So aside from Alki views, downtown views, uh, Elliott Bay views, Mount Rainier views, uh, even the Olympic Mountain views, what I really like about Magnolia in this area 
is everything that you need is in Magnolia. You don't have to go anywhere, all the shopping's there, but there is a broad range of different architectural styles, um, not just infill, but over time, you know, again, similar to Queen Anne, that, that uh, Queen Anne really got its foothold in the late 1800s. That's why there's a lot of Victorians, four squares, and then um, if you go by the decade, I think I've done a video on, you know, what type of home gets built every decade. In Magnolia, you know, you have a lot more homes that were started to be built in the 30s. So you have a lot of Tudor homes. And then on the bluff, of course, you find a lot of traditional architecture that, that nods back to Tudor. You will still see some stark modern. Um, that If you're not familiar with stark modern, modern <laughs> it's like uh, Northwest Contemporary meets meets a uh, uh, mid-century modern with uh, uh, a little bit of industrial dark lines in it. So you'll see some of that too with those those angled roofs that open up the views out into the, you know, over the Puget Sound. So there is quite a variety of different style of home. It's not gonna feel very cookie cutter at all, um, but it really has a nice sense of community there. And insofar as some of the other neighborhoods, it's pretty approachable insofar as price. Now, number nine on the list is a smaller neighborhood uh, east of Lake Union called East Lake. So East Lake is just under I-5 on the shoreline of, e of South Lake Union under Capitol Hill. It's a very, very small neighborhood and it's, it's in part of the part where uh, the hill starts to rise quickly up over to I-5 and Capitol Hill. The, one of the things that's difficult about this neighborhood is you kind of do live underneath I-5 depending on where you are, but one of the benefits is, is because of the slope, almost every house has a view. And with the infill, they are building some beautiful homes, rooftop decks, tremendous views, Gasworks Park, the Olympic Mountains in downtown Seattle uh, are the views that you would start to capture over there and which sets you up nicely for the 4th of July. Uh, a lot newer construction home and a lot more infill coming in to East Lake. It really is kind of a beautiful little nook of a neighborhood uh, close to downtown, close to South Lake Union that really offers a lot of access to Seattle, access to Capitol Hill, access to downtown, and, and fair access to the freeways. And there you have it. That's the top nine most you know, presti prestigious neighborhoods here in Seattle. If you haven't already, tap the notification bell, like, subscribe, do all that fun stuff. And if you're considering making a move, reach out to us, give us a call, shoot us a text. Uh, be happy to jump on a call and brainstorm with you. I really appreciate it. And uh, we'll see you in the next video. Talk to you.